What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. We're going to be talking about some exciting stuff, stuff that we were expecting to see, and we finally got some, got something um, that should have been, we should have seen this a long time ago, but now we're seeing it. And Brian, <laughs> and Brian, I have to say, I liked what I saw. I'm curious a little bit more now of what we're going to see. Um, and I'm referring to Black Adam, of course. Um, we're going to be talking about um, uh, Moon Knight um, and what some some things that Kevin said. Well, we really got to dig a little deeper as to what this all means with regards to we're not pulling back. What are you aiming for? Are we aiming for a rated R series on Disney Plus? I don't know. But he seems to be wanting to push the envelope a little bit in terms of how graphic and visceral this show will be. And um, we got a lot of characters that sort of demand that sort of uh, uh, visual uh, and action sequence, all that stuff, all the violence things that we usually tend to see with these characters. Are they going to show up on Disney Plus? I, I still I, I still doubt that, but let's we'll talk about it a little bit more then we'll talk about um the lord of the rings trailer brian i'm sure you're excited about this um mm -hmm. it looked great um but another trailer that came out my friend dr strange 2 this is going to be crazy i've been saying this for a while that dr strange 2 is going to be something everybody's going to be looking forward to seeing because there's a lot of things the theories out there are crazy. Um, we got Illuminati. We got whether we're going to see uh, Tom Cruise as Superior Iron Man. Some are saying Blue Marvel. Some are saying um, um, uh, Photon. Is it Photon or Captain? Well, there's uh, definitely a Captain. Monica there's Rambeau. A Marvel. There's a Marvel in that trailer. So, yes. yes. There's a Marvel somewhere. Yeah. And, and listen, Doctor Strange 2 is like anything is possible we already know that patrick still we'll talk about it we'll talk about it um yeah. the batman um the possibility of a mr freeze showing up in a in a in a in a, in a future uh uh sequel of the batman um that i hope comes to fruition because mr freeze is certainly a character that we've talked talked about in the past brian that is really a tragedy and 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 some a character that you can sympathize with sympathize with with and 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 we would love to see that iteration from Matt Reeves on, on screen. Um Halo 2, I mean Halo, the season two has already been greenlit. So this is already getting a lot of uh is making a lot of noise. Uh, people are excited for this. Paramount is doing, you know, they, they, they're doing a lot to get people to subscribe is they're making a case for, to get my money. <laughs> but they're spending a lot of money. I don't know. Yeah. 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 They, yeah, they, they gave yeah. the numbers around that. Like everyone else, they are pouring money into their IP and their streamer. So. Yeah. And, and we, we definitely ought to talk about, I, I don't know if you saw Brian um, Keaton, in uh, the, the 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 shots, the behind the scenes shots for of, of the yeah, flash. yeah in Batgirl, yes, no, Batgirl. Well, that was Batgirl. Oh, yeah, it's Batgirl. You're correct, correct. Batgirl in the suit. Yeah, yeah yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. I, we got to talk about that because uh, I have certain things to say about that. And then you know we'll get into some random stuff like you know studios putting out putting out the stops and, and getting anything. <laughs> on screen to get people to subscribe. <laughs> it's, it's, it's getting, Brian, the fatigue is not setting in, but I can see why it would. We'll talk about that. But first, Black Adam, we finally get to see these other characters. Hawkman, uh, Dr. Fate, um, the one that this guy is playing, Adam, um, Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher, yes. Adam Smasher. That looked pretty dope. It looked pretty dope. So we finally get to see uh, the Justice Society. Brian, what were your uh, what was your reaction when you saw this? 
um, uh, when you saw, when you finally saw these other characters, uh, were you impressed? What, what were your thoughts when you saw this? Yeah, I agree. So this is in the context of the DC Heroes 2022 montage. It was very short. It was a 60 second spot, which basically some encompassed the Batman. Got nothing new there. Yeah. Um, Flash, nothing new there. All footage, I think. I think it was all footage we had seen from the fandom trailer. Maybe a, there was one shot of the suit charging up that we hadn't seen. Yeah. Aquaman, we got a shot of the new suit yeah. and a shot of the old one, yeah. but no new line. That was a line from the first movie. And then we got this, these quick cut black Adam shots. Look, I agree. I, you know, in some ways I thought, so my, yeah, I think my favorite, I like Dr. Fate. And I liked Adam Smasher. I thought the Adam Smasher scale, it didn't look cheap. Like when yeah. he's running, when he's kind of running through this like wasteland town or whatever, mm-hmm. like in some ways it looked better than like, you, remember, you know, when, when, when like Ant-Man becomes giant, mm-hmm. there's a few moments where like the physics look a little bit off. Mm-hmm, like he's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this one looked a little cleaner in fairness, yes. like same idea, looked mm-hmm. a little cleaner, the damage that he was doing. So I like that. Like, I mean, Pierce Brosnan has one of the best voices, I think, of, of any actor in, in, in working today. And so to hear him kind of kind of maxing out his Pierce Brosnan yeah. and, in sort of talking, clearly talking and pleading with, with Black Adam. And he looked good. Like he looked good as like an older Dr. Fate in the helmet. Yeah. Um, they tweaked the, they, I think they, they kind of took the color palette down a little bit. Dr. Fate usually portrays like very bright, like yes. yellow or whatever. And they kind of toned that down. It looked pretty good. And yeah, look, I mean, the rock, the rock suit looks fine. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm not surprised. I mean, like yeah. we knew it was going to be sort of comic staple and he, he obviously fills it out like no other actor could. Um, I, I did want to see one real shot of him doing some of this new effects that they've teased. And I guess we didn't really get that, but, but no, I agree with you. I mean, like, I just don't understand how these, these shots weren't ready for fandom two years ago, to be quite honest. Like that, yeah. these are the scenes that we should have seen at fandom during the pandemic. Yeah. My opinion. Yeah, it's man. A it's a plus one for the film, yeah. no question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, still not super excited, more curious than excited. Um, I want to see this film and what this is going to be. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just even keel, not super excited for this. Um, uh, let's see what this does at the box office. Will it make, do you think it's going to make a billion? I'm in the camp with zero percent chance, so I can't come off. Wow! That. Okay. <laughs> I can't come off that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I, I think I'm there with you. I, my opinion will change once uh, the review embargo uh, comes out. If the review embargo comes out like two days before the movie comes out, then I'm. We can sort of. <laughs> Uh, guarantee well, we know. that there's yeah. yeah 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 um, then we know but yeah let us I think know even the if com- the reviews are good though. i think even if the reviews are good i don't think it gets there i think people just forget like like i said when it's a first go it is so hard to get to one billion dollars like people toss that number around because marvel made it look easy but it's yeah. not like it's just not like this movie the Rock has said he wants it to be a billion. I'm just saying the history is clearly on my side in the sense of, but this movie could make 650 and it would be a phenomenal success as a debut movie for a new character. That would be an accurate statement. The bar is Aquaman, first time out, a billion. And it, and it, and it wasn't to me, you know how I feel. I don't think it was a fantastic movie. I don't think it, I don't think that's a billion dollar film, but it made a billion dollars. I think the rock is looking at that as the bar and how he can, he can throw his, his, his name in there as, as another billion dollar man because of all the success uh, of that Marvel has had the success that Aquaman has had. And, uh, all he needs this movie to be is a great movie or at least a really decent showing um, for it to get there. Um, so it has but a Aquaman, chance. So I, but see, like, so the two things I would say about Aquaman, though, is number one, 
you know, I, I know we, we, we pan Justice League, but don't underestimate that, like, Aquaman was on screen mm-hmm. before he did his own movie, right? It's the same, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's like Black Panther and Civil War. That's a much better movie. But it's like, it does help when the actor and the suit make a substantial appearance before they get their own film. So I, I, to true. me, Aquaman's got an asterisk. The other asterisk, like I said, is what made Aquaman a billion dollar movie is it struck this chord in Asia. And James Wan is a director with a huge sort of, he has a following because of his work okay. in the horror genre and that really paid overseas. So yeah. that, those are two things that Black Adam doesn't have working for it. I realize The Rock is a bigger star than Jason Momoa was at the time, mm-hmm. but it, it doesn't have that you know, built in sort of things work. Like I think if Black Adam had popped up, honestly, like had he been in Shazam in like a secondary role, I'd be a little more inclined to say, Yes. Then a billion dollars might be in play. Yes. But because it, we're just coming out of the shoot with this, I, I, I say my West side, I think it's gonna be tough. I think I'm thinking more like six fifty, um, seven hundred maybe. But like that's kind of what I'm thinking this this settles out. And like I said, it will make money at that level a yeah. lot of debut superheroes don't get to that level so yeah yeah let us know in the comment section below uh what did you think of the the images that you got from that, that we were given from uh warner brothers on the black adam visually i think that it looked dope let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of it and do you think it makes a billion dollars uh, it'll be interesting to see if that happens, man. That'll be an interesting conversation when that does, if that does happen. Uh, Moon Knight. What did you think of the trailer for Moon Knight? I loved it. I thought it was dope. Uh, here's what I've said all along. I think this is, uh, this is my call. I think Moon Knight is going to be Marvel Shakespeare. That's my call. I think it's going to be two wow. guys. See, so here's my thing. I think like, if you look at most, most great actors working today, they will, they, all of them will kind of do movie, 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 and then they'll sign up to do a play. And they usually, and they'll do Broadway or they'll do West End in, in, in London. And they do that because they just want to flex their dramatic chops. And they just mm-hmm. want to go out in front of a live audience and just let their skills rip. I think that's what this series is going to be. It's going to be Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke basically going full theatrical like for however many episodes this is because that's when i see these trailers everything to me is like they just have given these guys like free reign to max out their characters i think the costume was great i'm i'm excited i think it looks cool i like what they're doing there i think the tone looks fun i think hawk looks really ominous like i'm just fascinated to see what he's doing with this arthur harrow sort of cult leader like i don't know what I, I love to. I, I can't wait till he he's a great interview. I can't wait till he starts promoting this because I want to hear what like cult leader and crazy dudes he used for inspiration yeah, for yeah. this. Um, but I I think it, I think it looks fantastic. I mean I think this show is going to be one of those that like it's twists and turns, and we're talking week to week like this is some some wild stuff. And obviously, then if you want to layer in the Feige comment. I have to admit, it, I didn't get brutal violence as like that hasn't been like a that hasn't struck me as like a theme in these trailers. But I mm-hmm. guess that's some of what we're in for here. So, which is also kind of cool. Yeah, it is. It's definitely cool. Um, but it, it seems like they're sort of pushing the envelope for the possible inclusion of other characters that require that sort of. Uh, uh, I guess brutality, um, especially for somebody like the Punisher. Some might even say Daredevil, which I think in Daredevil, the show on Netflix was a sort of like a rated R, right? You would consider that a rated R, right? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right? <laughs> definitely. So we love that. Do they dial it down? Again, I don't think you do the Punisher on Netflix. I mean, on, on on Disney Plus. I don't think you do Daredevil on Disney Plus. 
they have Hulu, and I think that's what they should. That's that's what they should do. I mean, you they put out Hit Monkey. I don't know if you saw Hit Monkey yet, right? But that's rated R as hell, and it was Marvel. Marvel plastered all over it, flipped everything. It's Marvel. It's a Marvel product on Hulu. I don't see why you can't do that. And obviously, when you hook up with Spider-Man and stuff like that, you can sort of tone it down in certain situations. You, you, you can play around with that and still make it enjoyable and, 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 and not rated R. But um, let's see how deep they go with this. Let's see how deep they, they go with Moon Knight. Um, I, I'm getting more and more excited every time I see like trailer for this or any new footage that scene where he jumps he's in the air and he and he has his uh cape that looked there's a lot of cool moments and there's going to be a lot of cool moments in this show and uh i'm looking forward to it very much let us know in the comment mm-hmm. section well, yeah go ahead yeah a little little late one before we, we taped here i don't know if you saw they um they cast f murray abraham as the egyptian god who kind of curses him f- I don't. I forget the god's name, but that's kind of cool. Con, too. So they got con, another con, something. Yeah. Con, so yeah. So they have a another Academy Award winner now in the uh, in the lineup as sort of. I, I'm guessing this is a smaller part, but yeah. maybe something that you know, a couple of cameos, small appearances, but still, you know, another big name kind of showing up in in this show. So yeah, I think I don't totally. I still don't totally know. Like I, I'm kind of going in very open minded. Like I'm excited, but I really don't have like a, we better see this or we better see that. I'm very flexible in terms of what they want to do with it, Um, which I think is great. Are you, would you just be disappointed if we get like a 35 minute episode? How long would you like, how long long would you want these episodes to be? Um, I think 45 is a good length. I mean, I think like, you know, because back in the day, like when you were watching something on TV and it was an hour long, it really was 45 minutes. So I kind of feel like that's about right. Like, I I feel like I've watched, there's some shows that I like where every episode is an hour. And like, it does feel a little bit long sometimes, even if it's good. Like if it's an hour with no commercials, like a TV show, but that's a lot. That's a lot. (laughs) So I think like if you give me 40 to 45 minutes of like really good stuff, like I'm, I'm fine with that. All right. All right. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below. What did you guys think of the moon Knight trailer um, shown at the Super Bowl? Um, Next up, let's, let's stay with Marvel for a second. Dr. Strange two, we got, uh, a big trailer for the Super Bowl. Oh. I, I've seen it multiple times, and the amount of stuff that's going to be going on in this movie, and the ideas of certain comic book characters that they've shown us, um, Brian. This this is going to be. <laughs> This is certainly a billion dollar film. I yeah, think. I think so. I think it's, I think it's, we had this discussion. I think one five is going to be tough, but I definitely think one to one two. I think that's where we're, where we're looking. I think this trailer, I think this, tra- this I've been trying to think about their marketing here. This trailer definitely is the trailer so the one they showed at the end of no way home good for wetting the appetite but i said to you at the time no way home was such a high that like i don't think a trailer at the end of that movie could have possibly like made you even more geeked if that makes sense the movie itself was so good and so fun yeah yeah so this you had a chance to like focus just on this movie and I have this image of like the parliament in the room editing this trailer, being like, just laughing, being like, oh, let's put in, let's put in this, let's put in this Easter egg. Let's, let's screw with the people here. Let's just, let's have Patrick Stewart's voice show up here. Like, like the, the amount of directions this could go in, like they're enjoying it, man. They, yeah. they realize that the fear, the fe- they're probably not going to be able to satisfy all the theories, but the theories are going to get people to buy tickets. And at the end of the yes. day, ducats are what, what they're after, right? And so, 
<laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we're going to get a similar sort of atmosphere when it comes to some of these appearances that we'll see in, in multiverse and some of the awe that people will experience when seeing this, what transpires in this film is I think is just, this is just made for the theater experience. And I think uh, what we got in Endgame, Infinity War, No Way Home, the, the, the surprises and the, 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 the enthusiasm for the stuff that we're gonna see in these films um, is it, just, they, they, they can't miss, I, I guess, with this. And, and, and theories all over the place. With they this, can this miss. I don't totally yeah, they, agree they, 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 can, be, they can miss. This could be a mess. This could be a mess. I'm not saying it will be. But I'm saying there's a way that a movie of this nature could be sure. too cluttered and confusing to where you're sure. like, okay, I had fun, but I have no idea what just happened. Like, and like you're not viewing that as a pantheon movie. And this is this is where my confidence comes from because all the stuff that they did with Loki with No Way Home, they did things very elegantly in their explanation that we weren't lost. Granted, multiverse is a very complicated. Uh, uh, it's a very complicated. Uh, story or, or or event that's occurring with this film and i find it difficult for them to they can mess it up but i find it difficult to believe that they will because of the other stuff that we seem to be or we've thought of oh this is just too much i don't know how this is going to work i have my concerns and they totally negate all those concerns and give us something amazing and I think when you add up all the variables, Sam Raimi, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, and some of the, ca the, the, the cameos, the Illuminati stuff that we're going to see, all this stuff, I think there's just going to be a lot of, we're going to be glued to the screen. And I, I, don't think, I don't think this movie will disappoint. Okay, so let's try to unpack a few things here. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, I think, what if? Big winner of this trailer. Oh, yeah. Big winner. Because, and, and I link this to the lead, I think Benedict Cumberbatch and Elizabeth Olsen are going to have the most fun in this movie playing the other version of themselves. themselves because yes. both the evil Scarlet Witch and Strange Supreme look awesome. Like yes. you look at those, they, they, the second they show up on screen, you're like riveted in a way yes, that yes. Doc Strange and Scarlet Wish, the good version, you're kind of like, I know them, they're fun, but it's the mm -hmm. other two, I think, that are going to make the stars kind of, you know, really shine. So again, if you haven't seen What If, like, I kind of feel like it almost becomes necessary viewing for, you to to watch it. Yes, yes, for yes, Strange yes. Supreme. Yes, 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 yes. Definitely, definitely. Not to mention, not to mention... Uh, Captain Carter, I guess, is in this movie? Possibly, yes. So, if she's on the poster, so, another, that's the what-if premiere, <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, and, you know, and which which officially has me on the lookout for The Watcher, I'm just going to say that. Yeah. I, I still maintain Jeffrey Wright did not sign up to be a voice-only character. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm telling you, like, what to me, like, I watch this trailer, and I'm like, you, you, you kind of have to go back to what if and be like, all right, I can be fresh on that show going into this movie in case they pull more stuff yeah. from that, you know, from that mythology. So anyway, that that was number one. What what was your reaction seeing like the lead, like the lead characters? So we got Strange, Scarlet Witch. Let's say those are the two kind of Avengers leads in this. How excited are you to see, you know, kind of the alter egos of both of those? I'm, 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 listen, when she was talking to Dr. Strange, she was telling him, when you do something, you be, you're the hero. And when yeah. I do something, is, 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 I'm the enemy. That doesn't seem fair. You can tell that she is not saying it in a way like she's not going to do something about it. She's going to do something about it. It's like she's at a point where nobody's going to control what she does. You know, it, it's... 
it's setting up for something big. People are saying that she may be the true villain of this movie. I don't know. Maybe. Um, people talking about no more music. Uh, when, listen, no, we, we, no, we, please, no, 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 Brian, you and I have to have a conversation about the X-Men and how difficult it is to bring them back into the fold. Mm-hmm. Is, is it, this, I was watching the X-Men. Listen, the, for the past week, I've been watching the X-Men animated series. Um, and there's just greatness in there, man. There's just greatness. <laughs> if you listen, if you haven't watched the X-Men the animated series, you got is must see TV. The, 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 the way they talk and the problems that they the inner the the inner uh, um, um, feelings that these guys these characters have they're all very unique and the the questions that they ask are just is it, this is very difficult for for Marvel to bring them into the fold and and is it, that's Agreed. not going to happen anytime soon so hopefully we have a, a show where we talk about the difficulties in bringing the X Men back in, in, into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and how they're going to do it. And, and what does it need to be in order for it to be successful? But for Doctor Strange 2, man, Multiverse of Madness, uh, I'm expecting big numbers. Um, and I think a lot well, of people I, are going to show, show up to see this. I was going to say that, that that quote you were referencing, we had heard rumors that Elizabeth Olsen and Benedict Cumberbatch kind of were going to throw down in this movie. Yeah. And yeah. like that quote and that scene made me think that that's what's behind that that's what yes. that's after that and i was like i'm all i'm here for a maxed out you know as we said like when it's not their true avenger self fighting i think the stakes are much higher because then if you have like a good strange and a bad scarlet witch or a, ba- a good scarlet witch and strange supreme they can really go at it um and hopefully we see something cool the effects look great the rain like some of the rainy effects and some of the the wackiness of it yes, you know like, yes, yes, like yes. The, the, i think the which which is fantastic um so all right so you 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 opened up the the x-men can of worms so let's let's start let's do the preamble to that discussion right here which is that clearly is patrick stewart's voice so the question yes. is what patrick's what professor x is what charles xavier is this that we're seeing mm-hmm. and you know to your point which i think is one of the best points about this whole process is you know for a whole generation of people professor x is patrick stewart so how does more and you know patrick stewart's not he's pretty old like he's still he's still very much you know delivering good stuff and he's gonna have picard yeah. and he's gonna have i guess he's gonna have this movie but they've got to be able to grow past patrick stewart yes, too yes. and they obviously tried to do it with james mcavoy on the fox side but you know it's hard like patrick stewart looks like comics charles xavier in Mm -hmm. in his wheelchair form so like how do they how do they if they're going to use him how do they then grow this character into a new version that people love and, and embrace that's not kind of tied down by what patrick stewart did so well with this character for 20 years i think they're gonna put this in his own sort of bubble, I guess, in the multiverse and not let it leak out into other things. Because like you said, Patrick Stewart is old, is, you know, he's, he's, he's older chap, you know? And uh, when we finally get the X-Men, that character has to be a mainstay. And certainly we're gonna get um, multiple movies of the X-Men because again, if you watch the X-Men animated series, it's like they go through so much. Um, I, I've never been uh, opposed for them to bring back James McAvoy or, or perhaps even bring back um, Fassbender for Magneto because I thought they played those characters fantastic. They were fantastic in, in those roles. So I wouldn't be opposed to that, but how do they do it? I don't know obviously the multiverse, but how, you know? Um, There's a lot of questions. And listen, for those people out there who think, I don't believe it to be the case, but 
this doesn't get resolved at the end of this. Your no. thoughts? No, I don't think there's any way. Plus, you've got you're introducing America Chavez. We got our first look at her in this trailer. As you said, there's a Captain Marvel somebody. Doesn't look like Brie Larson. You said a lot of people saying it's it's uh, it's it's uh, Monica Rambeau. Um, there's too much here. You, there's no. There'll be like a I don't know what you call it, like a stalemate resolution, some kind of chapter ending that they can work with. But it clearly yeah. is going to have way more bigger picture questions yeah. than answers. Um, so yeah, no, I, I and I'm fine for this particular movie. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with yeah. that because this movie is much as much an intro to cinematic multiverse, right? If Loki was the intro to like Disney Plus multiverse, this is the intro to big screen multiverse. So yeah, um, yeah in that sense, it shouldn't have an ending. Um, yeah 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 i mean you got kang still running around there's a lot there's a lot for it to just be resolved in this one film um certainly uh, like you said it's gonna have some sort of uh um resolution that leads to other things um but not totally multiverse resolve Uh, to me it's just an impossible thing to do given that you have all this other stuff happening right um it's, it, i'm just fascinated by how they're going about doing this because we still don't know again the theories are out there are, are crazy nobody knows what's going to happen everybody has good theories but we really don't know how they're going to go about doing this and i think that's one of the biggest selling points right there brian for this film is that we don't know there's so much going on we see characters that we barely see. We don't know who they really are. Obviously, one that we know for sure. But who are those other people sitting um, for this, uh, I guess, trial or this judgment against Dr. Right. Strange for whatever it is that he did? Um, so. Yeah, we didn't talk about Baron Mordo, but uh, Chi Wattel is, is in the movie. And yeah, I think the other thing you're making, a, you're making a very good argument for without specifically saying it is this is why i don't want a lot of cameos in this movie like because this trailer underscores how much this movie's main narrative has for us to kind of sink our teeth into so i don't want to spend 15 minutes or 20 minutes of this film ha haing at tom cruise or emily blunt or whoever else they get to be an alternate universe Avenger. Like it's, it, it's cool, but I just, I'm like, I don't want to get bogged down in that when this trailer is clearly showing you this movie has a lot of ground to cover. And I'm really, and we're really interested in that ground. We don't need 27 cameos for this movie to be sold, but they're clearly going to do some cameos because they want to, again, increase box office. And sure, if word gets out that Tom Cruise is going to be in the Iron Man suit for even two scenes, yeah, that'll sell some tickets. I don't disagree. Yeah, I, I, I mean, if he's in the movie, it'll probably be for a short sequence. He's probably, who knows? He's probably one of the guys sitting down a, a, in that that chamber. Um, what is do do we know the, the running time for this movie? We do not. I would guess it's going to be at least two and a half, though. I don't think it'll be as long as the Batman, but I would guess it's probably between two thirty and. You know, two thirty-five, somewhere around there. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think uh, of Doctor Strange two and that 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 trailer. I gotta call my source and find out and, and get some confirmations. Uh, that's what I gotta do. <laughs> I tried calling today and I and I didn't get her. Uh, 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 no, they didn't pick up. But uh, I'm gonna keep on calling and see if I can get some some news and, and confirm some stuff. Like we did last time with the three Spider Man and Charlie Cox being in No okay. Way Home. Yep. Um, speaking of the Batman, Brian, how many? How long? How long? Are we well, three weeks now. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two wow. weeks from today. I got. My, we both have our tickets. You have. You have two sets of tickets. Yes, for three. <laughs> And then seven. 
<laughs> I got my day. I, I think I, I am seeing the movie before you, though, right? So I yes, not yes, yes, yes. It for two days. I, I'm, yeah, seeing yeah. It, I'm seeing a March second. Yeah, but I don't um, want to hear from you. <laughs> I don't want. I want. I, I want. I the only comment I sent to you, which I'll share with the people, is like I said, where, where I am, tickets of movie theaters are very plentiful, and tickets have been easy to get. And even No Way Home, which wound up being sold out opening night, I got. I bought my tickets the week before the Thursday evening show. And there were plenty of seats. And then I showed up Thursday night and the theater was full. I went to buy my seats for the Batman. Um, and I was, there were only three available seats in the theater. And so there is real interest. That's the point. There is real buzz for yeah. this movie. And so we talked about the long range box office projections. Um, stand by what it said, I, I still would be impressed if this is north of $200 million, just given you know, in the U S opening weekend, just given the three hour okay. length, but Seeing this early demand made me feel like, you know, I mean, 175. I mean, I'm definitely raising the estimate a little bit. It feels like the, the buzz is really building and people, you know, especially now, like I said, COVID cases are coming down a lot, like mass restrictions are coming off, like theaters are going to be open for business. And this is the first big event of the year for yeah. moviegoers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is what, 15 months in the making? Almost, it's 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 it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, kind of ten years in the making, if you're thinking Solo Batman, right? Ten years since Solo Batman was on screen in Dark Knight. Wow, it's, it's, it's it's crazy that has been that that it has been that long. Um, you also you sent me a text earlier. Um, I was actually watching John Campia, and and they mentioned this as well that China is gonna. Be showing mm. the Batman on time, yeah. And Mr. Campia says, because somebody wrote into the show and said that this guarantees a billion. And 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 Campia says he doesn't think that guarantees a billion. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> no way home. Is at 1.8 billion, yo. That's crazy. Without just, China, yep. Without, imagine, yo. Does it beat out Endgame? No, that would mean another billion dollars. I think it would beat Force Awakens. Okay. Force Awakens is right around, right? I think Force Awakens is a shade under 2.1, 2.1 mm -hmm. billion. I think definitely with you know China would have been good for another three hundred million. Like the Marvel characters have always played well in China historically, yeah. actually more so than the DC characters, except for Aquaman. Yeah. Um, so I actually think for sure they would have gotten another three hundred million out of China box. So they would that would have put them at the two one two two. So they, this would have been the number three three movie of all time because you would have had Avatar, Endgame, yeah, and then this. Yeah, this would be the number three global movie of all time. Yeah. So this with this China opening, Brian, does this not guarantee one billion dollars for the Batman? I think a billion dollars is already guaranteed. I think I think the, the discussion here is whether it puts your one point five in play, depending on how good this is. Like I said, the, the Batman series grew as the international phenomenon over the course of the Nolan trilogy. If you go back to even to like Dark Knight, which made over five hundred million dollars in the US, it it kind of, the international box was about the same. It wasn't mm -hmm. much bigger. And then with Dark mm -hmm. Knight Rises, it's kind of skewed a little more international. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if this is really good, I think the China box office should be worth like, I don't know, I mean, No Way Home was, my estimate was like 300 for sure. I would say this is 200 mm -hmm. <clears throat> probably for sure. So then you're saying, okay, can the U.S. If the U.S. gets to one two, and then you're getting two hundred plus from China. Now you know. Now you're talking one four. You know, knocking on the door of that one five number. So not impossible. But I think mm -hmm. it's it's just big news because we haven't had any movies in this genre shown on time in China in over a year. And yeah. you know that's going to reduce. Pi it's going to reduce piracy. It's going to reduce a lot of sort of the you know black market availability of this film, and that is going to help box office for sure. So, yeah. Um, and also, you know, there are those who seem to believe that some people will be confused because of the past iterations of Batman or, or the, the 
the Ben Affleck Batman and the Michael Keaton Batman that's coming out. There's no confusion here. Everybody knows what they're going to be seeing when they go see this movie. Everybody will make sure that whoever doesn't understand what Batman we're getting, they'll make whoever is excited for me, excited for the Batman as I am, will make it clear to those who are confused. So that everybody who's going to go see the Batman know what the, knows what they're going to go see. They're not, there's no confusion here. There seems to be this thought process, oh, because all the Batmans that we've gotten, all the Batmans that we're getting, that people are not going to forget about all that. We've been at this for over a year now. People have seen the trailer. People knows people know who this uh, uh, people know who um, Pattinson is and who he's going to play. So for me, this is the easy one billion. Take that to the bank as um, what's this guy used to say uh, in, in hard to kill and then take that to the bank. <laughs> wow. <laughs> as a reference. <laughs> we'll yeah, take no, you I, to I the, don't think there's yeah. confusion. Yeah, nah, yeah, exactly. I, I, I mean, like, like yeah. I mean, like, let, let's be let, let's be accurate about the confusion here. If people are making that case, like. From a theatrical standpoint, the last time Batman was on screen was 2017, and that was Ben Affleck in the Justice League. Now, Zack Snyder's Justice League, where right, it was a streaming-only movie, so yes, technically you could have seen Batman last year in that. But I mean, from a big screen perspective, it's been five years since any Batman was on screen, and like I said, it's been 10 years since Batman had his own movie on screen. Don't don't give me the you know oh Batman was you, you know you saw Batman briefly in the suit at the end of the Gotham TV series no that doesn't apply you saw a young Bruce Wayne in the Joker movie doesn't apply uh, you know even Michael Keaton that's not really a fair comment because I feel like the vast majority of the movie going public either probably isn't actually aware of that or we haven't seen an actual trailer for the Flash it's not like you're see it's not like you seen michael keaton you've heard his voice in the fandom yeah. teaser we now have seen a set photo from batgirl but that's for people like us who are following the genre the casual moviegoer is not like you know planting flags around michael keaton's return in the flash right now as being like a reason why they're not going to see robert pattinson in the batman no the movie that's in front of them is the batman because that's the one that's being promoted actively right now so there's no crowding out. The Batman yeah. has everyone's attention. Exactly. Speaking of Keaton, we saw, as you mentioned, uh, some set photos of him. I don't know if it's him in the suit, Brian, but we saw the suit. I'm not entirely. Listen, you usually with these set photos, the suits don't actually look that great. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, this one doesn't look that great. Um, so we'll have to see what it looks like for the Batgirl. Um, am I getting a little bit more interested in the Batgirl? Not really, <laughs> but we'll see what we get. I'm, I'm, I'm at a wait and see for the bat for, for, for this, uh, the Batgirl or Batgirl, whatever they call this movie. Um, I'm at a way to see. Uh, I wasn't entirely impressed um, with the with the suit. It looks kind of like not filled out. Um, it looks kind of sloppy. But again, this is set photo, so we don't until the movie comes out. We can't really say what this looks like. But uh, more your impressions of what you thought? Yeah, same. I mean, I think we we've gotten now a shot of Leslie Grace in the Batgirl suit, which is fairly comics accurate i don't know if it was like my yeah, favorite yeah, yeah. superhero suit but it did look like the comics batgirl and i see keaton in you know th this suit which is interesting if you go back to like the 1989 batman that suit was very much like a muscle suit like it had like a lot of definition to it yeah, yeah. and then in batman returns it was a little bit more of an armored suit like they kind of changed they did away with the muscles and they kind of had more like plating yes, in the midsection yes. And this kind of seems like even a little more bulky to me. Like they kept the cowl and the yellow symbol, but like the midsection and the legs, he looks thicker, which may just be because Michael Keaton may weigh more than he did in 1992 yeah. or 1989, which is 
totally fair. But yeah, they, but again, you, you literally just see him like he's talking to the director and then you see a head on shot. You have no idea what he's doing. You don't know what he looks like, what they're doing visually. So it's hard to draw any conclusion. We don't really know what his function in this movie is. Is it flashback? Is it active, you know, mentor? Like we really don't know. Um, so it's, it's hard to kind of put a lot together again we just until we see like a teaser or a trailer or something to kind of get a feel for what they're going for here Mm -hmm. i think it's hard to get really 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 fired up on on this so as i mean it's like this is the thing that suffers because the batman is coming out right it's like we don't have time for this right now when that that's (laughs) coming (laughs) yeah they should have waited they should have waited um one final uh, thought before we move on to uh, a couple of other things not related to the superhero genre somewhat. Um, uh, the Batman um, the po- and the possibility of a Mr. Freeze uh, yes. storyline uh, for in, in the possible trilogy of the Batman. We've spoken about it in the past, Brian, and you and I are in agreement that um, it would be it would be a compelling story because the Mister Freeze is a very tragic one. Um, it was very well done in the animated series, um, and uh, it's certainly something that we would like to see uh, Matt Reeves take on this uh, character. Your thoughts on the possibility of this happening? Yeah, I have to be honest. I didn't understand. So the thesis of the article was kind of like, okay, if this bat universe is so grounded, how do you bring in the silly, like the quote unquote silly or weird or villains of the Batman universe? But I didn't understand why Victor Freeze was the one they chose as an example. I don't find Victor Freeze silly at all. I think he's actually one of the easiest ones to translate yeah. into the real world because of his motivations. Mm-hmm. Because he has an ambiguity, like he isn't a hundred percent villain. Yeah. Um, he has noble aims that you can sympathize with. He's obviously driven by love. He's an incredibly smart scientist. Like the science we're talking about doesn't, you know, it's something that you could definitely translate into, you know, a, a functional suit, something that isn't what Arnold Schwarzenegger was wearing in 1997 <laughs> for sure. But like, I actually think victor freeze is one of the more interesting characters that matt reeves could pursue because we wouldn't necessarily perceive him as a hundred percent bad guy necessarily and so i think that's a great choice now pattinson voted for court of owls i don't know if you saw that he kind of oh, yeah. that was the one he kind of was like if i get my if i get a vote then that's the one i would like to see so you know i don't know if that means that they haven't really i have a tough time thinking they haven't decided i almost feel like this is more a conversation for the fans Mm-hmm. I have a feeling that they have a sense of what it actually is, but, mm-hmm. but I listen, live action. So, and I would also say, I, this may be controversial. I didn't love the voice acting on the animated series, Victor freeze. It was one of my least favorite of the villain voices. Like in a way, like Mark Hamill was perfect as a Joker. Kevin Conroy was perfect really? as a Batman. I don't love the Victor freeze voice. So I my liked argument it. Is, okay. So my point is, I think there's a live, I think as a live action portrayal, I don't necessarily feel like you're living up to anything from that. I think you got a full white space to kind of work with and, and make us buy into Victor Freak. Oh, yeah. I they mean, already, look, they, they, they already took one of the silliest, quote unquote, silliest Batman villains in the Penguin and they made him interesting. So yeah. we already crossed that bridge. Why are we worried about that? Yeah, and, and and the Riddler has always been some somewhat of an uh, an interesting character because of all the riddles and and it makes you think so the cerebral aspect of it, and he looks totally different from what we've seen in the past. So, um, uh, Mister a uh, Mister Freeze, uh, uh, a possible Mister Freeze uh, story. Listen, I'm all in for that. Uh, I think another name that was thrown out was Clayface. Now that would be a little bit difficult to pull off, but. Interesting nonetheless, but difficult to pull off. Um, so yeah, let us know in the comment section below. If is Mr. Freeze a character that you would like to see in Matt Reeves' world? Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Um, let's move on to some other stuff. Um, Lord of the Rings, Brian, this is something that you have been looking forward to seeing. 
um, a lot of people who are fans of the Lord of the Lord of the Rings trilogy are looking forward to seeing. Uh, visually, obviously, it looks breathtaking. Um, the story is uh, uh, that they're going to tell. I'm not quite familiar with, um, but these are prequels, right? Yeah, so there's a, actually some interesting stuff out on this post the Super Bowl trailer. Um, so first off, uh, you know, I, I think the, the sets and the backdrops look amazing, as you would expect. They went back to New Zealand um, for a lot of that. The CGI was a little hit or miss. There's a few scenes in the trailer, like there's one of Galadriel. Yeah, I think that's young Galadriel. It's supposed to be who's like got a stick and a knife uh, in the cliff. Like, trying to climb. I thought it was a game. Yeah, right? The facial <laughs> shot looks a little off. So you hope they tighten that up by the time we get to September. But the thing that also came out after, which was sort of interesting, was the showrunners for this basically clarified what exactly they have the right to use and what they don't. And it's actually a really interesting bifurcation because Tolkien, Tolkien wrote an enormous like, extended universe around the books that everyone knows via The Hobbit and, and the actual Lord of the Rings. So this show only has the right to use the three Lord of the Rings books themselves and The Hobbit. Now, the Lord of the Rings books, it's Return of the King. If you get to the end of Return of the King, there's a lot of appendices which deal in the prehistory of the Lord of the Rings. That seems to be what this show is leading with. Uh, it's called The Second Age, which would be like, and actually, if you remember the very start of the Fellowship of the Ring, they show you kind of the highlights of what I think this show is going to like dig into and build toward. Okay. But it's interesting. They don't have the rights to the Silmarillion. Um, some of the other short stories Tolkien wrote, they literally can't use those. So it okay. does, there is a limiting factor and they can't in any way connect this show to Peter Jackson's movie. That's an interesting like restriction that was placed on them. So there's wow. even though you're gonna see some of the same, so like Elrond could be in this movie, Galadriel could be in this movie, Aragorn could certainly be in this movie, but they can in no way connect them to the versions you saw on screen 20 years ago. That's interesting. Now, what's also been interesting is the fan reaction to this. Little Star Wars, little Star Wars be going on right now. There's people like me who I think are like, we're just fans of the work and we're very happy to go back to the universe and kind of just enjoy and see what $500 million a season will buy you. <laughs> yeah. But there's people who are like, it's dead to them already. Like this is like last Jedi rise of Skywalker type stuff yeah. where they're like, if it ain't Peter Jackson, like F off, I don't want to see it. Like there's yeah. definitely that like, so this is going to be polarizing. That's my sense. It's like, this is not going to be like unilaterally loved by the people who love these works. Um, so I'm fascinated to see, I mean, Amazon doesn't care. They just want viewers, but like, mm -hmm. I, I, I'll be interested to see when these episodes actually hit, whether you start to see some viral, like hate campaigns toward this show. Um, cause it certainly sure. feels like there's some negative groundswell around this, uh, which is coming. Although Bezos supposedly is like a Tolkien nerd. So like to your about shows getting second seasons before the, he probably has like $20 billion earmarked <laughs> for this show. I'm telling you, like they are probably guaranteed like five, six seasons just cause like Amazon can't afford for this IP to not be there with what they're yeah. spending already. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I think this one, I think this thing is going to run for a while, whether, whether we like it or not, I think it's going to run for a while. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Lord of the Rings and this news about this not being really tied to the movies. Does it change your excitement level? Do you still want to see, are you curious enough to want to see it? Um, and, and will you be disappointed if certain things, cause this is going to be, it's like a, a brand new experience, um, almost because they're not connected. You're not going to be seeing something, but, oh, that's connected. Cause it's not right. It's all oh, that's connected to this, but it really isn't right. Is it that sort of situation? It, it is. And it is. I think the problem, like I said, is the problem is they, they, they are going to be 
they, they are going to have to, and they will be reusing character names you do know. So like, because the, because the elves live for so long, because some of these characters, li- the wizards, like they're, if they're using this stuff from Tolkien's appendices, as I said, you're going to be seeing characters you saw on screen 20 years ago. It's going to be the same name played by a different actor, which is yeah. going to make it hard to say like, well, no, this is it's totally disconnected from the portrayal and the performance you saw 20 years ago, but it's the same character. I, yeah. Like I said, Gladiel, Elrond, Aragorn, Gandalf, I think you're going to see all those. Gollum, I think all those characters are going to make an appearance at some point in this series if it goes long enough, because that's what the material says they need to do. Yeah. But uh, that's the challenge. I think is people are going to see, be like, well, no, Ian McKellen is Gandalf. That's not Gandalf. Like, yeah. Vigo Mortensen is Aragorn. That's not Aragorn. Like, that's going to be their challenge. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, next up, Halo, already green lit for a season two. What are your thoughts, Brian, on all these shows being green lit? Because uh, Halo, man, even though it looks, interesting it looks pretty good but you know the the it isn't a guaranteed hit in my eyes just yet because we all know that these uh game to live action shows or movies don't have a great track record and Halo has a very unique, I mean, it, it definitely, when it first came out, it had a fan base and, and, and they've been very successful with their games and the story behind in the games, but it live action story, that's another thing entirely. Um, I'm, I know you want to see it, but what do you think about this uh, greenlit uh, season already, this second season? Uh, so I what, is it, what does we'll it say? Into, I think what it says is, and we're going to talk about this in more detail in a few minutes, because I think it's emblematic of it, as these streaming services, these streaming services are all in, right? Like that's because that's the only way to be in this landscape. Yeah. And as we've talked about many times, there aren't going to be 20 streaming services in five to 10 years. So yeah. they are all competing to establish the IP that they have and the IP, if, the, if you have it, you have to deal the cards. Yeah. And so like, I don't view, I don't view like, if I see Loki getting a season two on Disney plus, that to me is a different statement than this getting season two on Paramount. So to me, like Loki two on season, getting the season two early, which is what it did. Had everything to do with, the parliament and Disney being really happy with what got turned in. And as we Mm -hmm. saw, it was a great show, right? So it was a great show. I think Halo getting a season two has everything to do with Paramount plus needs a brand. And that brand has to have as many identities as possible. And you can't establish those identities with one season limited series. You, You need as I talked about Star Trek, they're building this like animated live action universe on Paramount Plus. So like they want Halo verse. It has nothing to do with whether Halo season one is good. It's all about if we want to drive subscriber traffic over the next five years, we need to make sure that everyone knows if they want Halo, this is the only place they can find live action Halo. So we need to keep giving it to them and trying mm-hmm. to force them to kind of pay the subscription fee to come find it. I think that's what it's about. I don't think it has anything to do with how good season one is or is not. But Brian, it got to be good though, right? Because if the if it's whack, the numbers Does will it? reflect. The numbers will reflect, okay, so right? I agree and I disagree. So I agree that like, look, if you make enough bad stuff, people aren't going to watch it. I agree with that. But the angle for a lot of these streamers is to get acquired. And the way to get acquired is to have valuable property on your streamer. Halo strikes me as something that like, even if you did imperfect Halo down the road, I mean, I could see like a bigger, like let's say it's Netflix, let's say it's Amazon. I could see someone saying, I want to buy Paramount. And as part of buying Paramount, I'm getting the rights to Halo. 
And I value the rights to Halo, even if the existing Halo show isn't the show that I would do. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, so in that sense, having Halo live, fresh, and going is mm-hmm. like more important than having it be awesome in some ways. That's my theory on it. Let's see, man. Let's and see. we're going to talk about we're going to talk about that more in a minute because I think it connects to the, the next. Yeah, topic. yeah. And that that being said, we have now, and we didn't talk about it before, but you, but you have um, Wonder Twins movie coming out on HBO Max. Something that shocked the hell out of me. I'm like, word, and not in an exciting way, but just more like, really, yo. And now. We have, I mean, listen, I, Peacemaker got a, a season two greenlit already. Hey, good for you fans who, who love the show. But now we get Paramount is now set on doing villain films for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yep. Brian, please enlighten me as to what's going on because this, I, th- we've already known that the streaming wars has been in effect for a while and Paramount Plus didn't seem to be in the running, but they've certainly made a case for, again, for you to take my money because you have some pretty compelling shows. And, and, and I, I don't know if they have started doing movies yet, but the shows that they, they have coming on, I want to see them. But Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle villain films? Come on, man. It's like, really, yo? You haven't really done a... I mean, has the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action films been successful? Like, really successful? Well, do you... you, Well, I don't consider the... So the Michael Bay produced one that with, with Megan Fox that that did pretty well at the box office wasn't really truly live action. I mean, there was sort of motion capture turtles in that. Um, so the only live action turtles was the one from 1990 and 92, yeah. like the secret of the ooze. So no, I, I, I don't, but, but this is, this is derivative of what we were just talking about. This is, we own the rights to said characters. So, our job in the streaming world is to just squeeze and wring these these IP dry and get it up. Like Paramount came out the other day and said, we want to have 100 million subscribers by the end of 2024. And in the process, apparently they're going to be going around, they're, they're spending, say their, their content budget is going from like one and a half billion to $6 billion a year. And they're still going to be bleeding cash losing a ton of money to make this happen. And part of what they're doing is they're this is bad business. They're going from before, but they're going around and buying the rights back to all their stuff, right? So they want to yeah. make it so you can only watch Mission Impossible movies on Paramount Plus. Or you can only watch Top Gun on Paramount Plus. And then they're going to have all these shows. But like I said, in the back of my mind, I'm like, all this is about is you're just trying to create a franchise value for the streamer. Because someday if you partner or you merge or you know, there's a Warner Discovery deal for you, you want to say like, I want to get as much from my streamer as I possibly can, which means as silly and dumb as it may sound to have a shredder series or God forbid, I can't remember what the, like the one with the, I, I, what's the name of the villain who's like in the head in the, I don't know. They, they have some no really idea. silly ones, right? But like, <laughs> yeah, they have some really silly. So if you're going to build series around these or movies around these characters, you know, they, they're not going to have $200 million budgets. Right, yeah. they're not looking for that. They're just looking for the mousetrap of like, if you're a fan of TMNT, we're just gonna here's twenty options. Here's here's your cue. Yeah, um, and you're seeing that like across, like we talked about even like I, I think even something like the He-Man live action movie is like kind of along those same. It's like if you've got it, get it up there, you know. Yeah, and yeah. and in some ways, like it, maybe the analogy is back in the day like it's the straight to video world right like like if you go on disney plus now i actually think it's really it's really kind of interesting right you go on disney plus you're like wait they made a lion king one and a half what's that you know but like they did it just went straight to video in 1998 you know and mm-hmm. and so i think a lot of this stuff is the streaming the equivalent, equivalent yeah. of yes, that yes. 
yeah. right? It's the B grade, the C grade, the stuff when you went to your blockbuster and you're like, I didn't know there was a sixth version of American Tale or like <laughs> Land Before Time 8, right? Yeah. But that's what this is. And so I think it's just about creating value. And I think it's you and I are just that is it fatigue it is but the really is the core audience like the big audience isn't going to give this two second thought it's yeah. either for the kids or it's for the diehards but at yeah. the margin it's just like can we hook a few more subscribers yeah. can we hook a yeah. few yeah. more subscribers and make ourselves a little more valuable i think i think you're gonna keep seeing it i think you're gonna keep yeah. seeing it yeah 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 i mean that makes perfect sense that makes perfect sense um the hope is that we get a, a Voltron force now. I'm 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 gonna be pounding the table on Voltron and and anything else that I Thundercats. There's so many things that we can do um that we can bring back to life. Uh let's see if they 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 make these other things now, but it makes total sense that, you know. <laughs> well that wouldn't be the Voltron. So this would be the the Prince Lotor. <laughs> Series, right? That's what, this, that's what this would be. I'm telling you. You're like, we're... so then we're, we're, no. are we headed toward like we're gonna have the we're gonna have the team up show. Of, I'm telling you, we're gonna have like the team up show of like Lotor, like <laughs> Evelyn, Starscream. <laughs> I, oh again. my god! Or the Orco uh, series, thirty minute for kids. Yeah. Is, is... <laughs> it's gonna get out of hand man it's gonna get out we're gonna have an explosion <laughs> of, of of content that that is like we i don't want to well we'll see we'll see there's there's but the there's, wonder there's... twins is the same idea right yeah it's yes. not much different it's just like if you're coming for the dc library here's one more thing that you might be interested in yeah, it makes sense, but I just hope that you know my my only hope is that they 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 they're making quality stuff, man. Because it, when it gets to the point when you're making just bad stuff and you're just putting it out there just to get some money out of people, then it's like I'm done. I'm done. I mean, I'm with you, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you could look someone in, look someone in the eye with a straight face and be like, I have got a killer shredder idea for it. it's, it's kind of over when you say it's a shredder film right <laughs> yeah it's like shredder like the adventures uh, of master splinter like i don't know like it's, it's, it's tough i know right is this I, I don't know but hey the streaming wars are in effect um uh, full effect now um, and everybody's <laughs> trying to get do dollars, uh, you know, so that you can uh, give them every month and not even think about it, whether it's six, seven, 10 bucks a month, you're not even thinking about it. And, and you're just giving this money up every month, every month they get paid. So, Hey, it's a hell of a way to get paid. Um, but you got to shell out some, some, some ducats and, and they're going to do that it, it just so that you can keep on paying. Um, but yeah, that's our show for today, Brian. Any last thoughts? No, I mean, I think probably we'll do our what Batman preview show next, right? Where that's probably coming up. So our full formal Batman kind of run now. I get I get the book read and then uh, we'll kind of go go through all that and, and be ready. Yeah, so. I, I think our next show should be that. Uh I wanna really uh this, you know, the, they're gonna be some major news stories coming out, obviously, right? They they, they come on every week and and and, and they they're worth talking about obviously with when they come out but i i definitely want to this to me the batman is the biggest event of the year yes we got dr strange 2 coming out yes we have black panther we, we i don't know if we have shazam coming out i think we do we got Aquaman. we got some big stuff coming out this year but the batman is a huge event and uh, i've been looking forward to this day for quite some time and uh I want to see it back to back, yo. It's just something I haven't done ever. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to do this for the first time, go back to back to see a film. And uh, there's no other movie I think that's the, that's that's worth it for me. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this film. That's all I can say. I, I've been saying it for a while. And I have a pre-recorded video that I did with... Um, 
my previous crew when I used to do the show of me really talking this movie up. And if the Batman can hit some of the numbers that I think it'll hit, I'm going to replay that. This was from like almost, this was a little bit after the trailer came out. So this is a year, a little over a year that I did this video that I haven't put out because I was really talking Batman up and people were not sure, but this, this, the Batman is the event for me and for many who have been waiting for this film and it deserves our full attention at what this could mean for uh, future, for the future of the DC universe, really, because, you know, DC has been, they, um, they're not going to say it, but of course they want the same success Marvel has. Do you think they don't? Um, and this certainly could be the, the, the beginning of something. And, and I think you, we've heard already Matt Reeves talking about this Batman universe that he's uh, sort of building, right? With the Gotham TV show, the Penguin. Brian. I was just gonna say, keep an eye on this, this China box office situation. Uh, that, you know, I don't think it's a total accident that Marvel ran into some problems getting their films up on screen when, you know, some controversy tied to the, you know, Chloe Zhao, director of The Eternals, and Simu Liu, star of Shang-Chi. How's you? You know, DC in a position to maybe capitalize on that. You know, yeah. the Batman getting that approval, I don't think is a total coincidence. So if they deliver some good product this year with Marvel seemingly maybe in a penalty box, uh, overseas, uh, you know, that's an opportunity for DC to really kind of win, you know, score some big points. So they've got, and like, you got to say, like, they've got their front foot forward, right? I mean, say like the Batman character, they've got their most successful franchise so far in Aquaman, and they've got The Rock headlining Black Adam. That's a good, that's a yeah. good lineup. If yeah. Marvel's not getting their stuff through the through the sensors in China, that's a good lineup for DC to have. So yeah, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, all that's going on. Um, let us know if you bought your tickets for the Batman. Are you going to wait a week? Because when we talk about it, I'm not holding anything back. So don't if you don't want no spoilers, don't watch us. <laughs> um but yeah don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell share with your friends and we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report